Botetourt County is rich in culture and history. One shining example of this is the Greenfield Preservation Site, located on Route 220 between Daleville and Fincastle. Once owned by Colonel William Preston, the site now serves as a historical preservation site that allows people to catch a glimpse of history. One of the structures still standing is the farm manager's house, which is also the location of the Holiday Home, once owned by Sarah Preston. Sarah inherited the property from her father, John Preston, William Preston's son, in 1827. The home was owned by Sarah and her husband, Henry Boyer. It was sold to the Holidays in 1883 or 1884. The exact date of the house's construction is not known. However, records show that prior to 1835, the 371 acres was devoid of buildings. After 1835, the same sources record a $600 improvement to the property, which is likely the addition of the home. It was noted that the farm manager's house could have been built when the Boyer Holiday Home was constructed. Mike Polis of the State Department of Historic Resources reviewed the farm manager's house in 2015 and determined that it was built in two parts. He stated that the east side of the structure was built in the timber frame method and that it was built first, possibly as early as the 1830s. The log portion was added at a later date. You may have noticed in the Barber report that Mr. Barber stated the opposite was true concerning which side was built first. Mr. Polis hopes to come and look at this structure again later this summer. Timber frame construction was widely practiced throughout Europe and was undoubtedly brought over to North America. Timber framing was generally with lumber from the surrounding land. The timbers were assembled using wood joinery, such as mortise and tenson joints, wood pegs, and notching. There are homes dating back to the early 1600s in New England using this type of construction. On the inside, you can see the vertical logs with the clapboard attached to the outside. The second floor was added when the newer part was constructed. Both rooms shared the original chimney, which you can see is partially whitewashed. Both sides of the chimney now have openings for a stovepipe. The chimney is over 4.5 feet in depth, which created a small hallway between the two rooms. The logs are hand-hewn, which is indicative of construction prior to 1850. After 1850, sawmills were prevalent, according to Mr. Polis. The porch of the house is located approximately 35 feet north of the foundation of the Boyer Holiday Home. The cinder block foundation points out where the modern room was added, which almost doubled the size of the original home. There are also depressions in the earth, which likely indicate where outhouses or farm buildings were located, which were also noticed by Mr. Barber. The roof, which has been patched several times throughout the years, still has major problems. It appears that the rear of the home has been jacked up, allowing cinder block to be placed under the newer portions. The earliest parts of the cabin are still held up with what appears to be the original stone foundation. The bathroom and electricity were added in the early 20th century. Mr. Elmer Clemens, who lived at the Holiday House in the 1950s, noted that there was a spring near the home which they used for drinking water. I plan to meet with Mr. Clemens at the preservation site to do a field review at a later date when he is available. It is noted that the only archaeological study known in this immediate area was done on the foundation of the Holiday House. A list of the artifacts found there can be seen beginning on page 184 to 203 in the 1998 Barber Report.